Okay, test one, two. All right, we're ready, Adrian. Uh, good, ever good afternoon, everybody in the ICOM booth as well as on the Internet. Hi. Uh, this is going to kick off our first presentation from the booth today uh, with Mr. David Collingham, K3LP. Wasn't there another one? Just that later on we'll have a call. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be Mr. David Collingham, and his presentation is Ham Radio Youth Projects. Uh, last year we had Bev Matheson from... With the Grand Elementary. Uh, from Dorothy Grand Elementary in Fontana, California. And David was, David's been a big sponsor and supporter of that because that's where his education started, right? That's exactly right. Fontana is where my hometown as a youth moved out of there in about 1977. And also this Hamvention, David's been given a very nice award for his efforts, his humanitarian efforts, as well as his de-expedition efforts. And what was that again, David? Uh, CQ Magazine's uh, DX Hall of Fame was given to me last night, so it was a great honor to receive it. I know it was a, a very heart-touching presentation you did last night at the Swodex uh, DX uh, dinner. Appreciate the, the shout-outs you gave me there and also uh, what you've done for the hobby. So I'm going to leave it up to you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ray. So I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, first thank ICOM for all their support over the years. A lot of times when you go on de-expeditions and you're involved with youth, one of the activities that you need or one of the assets you need is equipment. And ICOM has always been there for me, and I'm sincerely grateful for that. So the presentation I'm going to go through today is going to talk about ham radio youth projects. I'll cover the Dorothy Grand Elementary. I'll also talk about Rotoma and so on. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put your hand up and ask me about it. So as I get to this age of 55, I need some glasses. So first of all, when we're talking about uh, working with youth, there is an element of mentoring. And one of the things I want to talk about is that first, A, you got to get yourself engaged. And everyone really questions the level of expertise or talent you have, and you question whether you're worthy enough to be someone's mentor. No matter where you're at in life, uh, I think the, the best idea that someone gave to me is that at what point do you become a mentor? What point do you become a consultant? A consultant is a person who invests at least one hour a day on a subject matter and you get really intense and knowledgeable about that. There's always someone out there you can use that advice. It doesn't mean that you're smarter than them, but in that particular element you are. So mentoring is really a wonderful, rewarding activity that I've been involved with. So a lot of these projects are going to talk about mentoring youth. Back in 2004, I had a chance with my good friend Willie, K6ND, and quite a few others, Alan, K6SRZ, out of California to go to Dvanaba, Tango 33 Charlie in the South Pacific. And that whole trip was really designed around doing a de-expedition. And part of that activity, we had an opportunity to meet youth and do some activities. So this photo right here really talks about or illustrates our involvement with some of the kids on the island. And Actually, it actually occurred uh, by pure accident. I think when we got there and we had to transport equipment and supplies from the dock to our operating location, we were able to meet a lot of youth. And from that, we engaged them in our project, whether it be carrying radios, whether it be helping us install radios, carry supplies. And then that real quickly went into actually going to the schools and participating a couple days. So it ended up being a fantastic learning experience for them and us. At NIR, uh, NIR, uh, NIAR and uh, India, I had a chance while going to the Andaman Islands back in 2006 to, to stop at the headquarters. And while there, it became quite apparent that they didn't really have much equipment uh, at the station. Also, their beam was not functioning. So as a group, I got the guys together at the station. We took down the beam, rebuilt the beam, tested it out. We talked about some electronic uh, activities. And from there, uh, actually in, installed uh, new power supplies, coax, um, a, a tremendous amount of assets were left at the station to try to get them uh, involved with getting their station on the air. 
one of our larger projects really happened with Rotoma back in uh, 2011. And at that time, while working with uh, the de-expedition on Rotoma, we were able to get about 24 people, the principal, four teachers, and roughly around 20 students involved with ham radio activities. ICOM was our donor on this particular de-expedition. At the bottom, you can see our team with our proud ICOM shirts on and the banner out front. But the most beautiful thing about this trip, though we were very successful with the de-expedition, the most important, I guess, learned experience for myself was we were able to engage 24 people on the island, get them involved with radio communications, actually have them participate. And my good friend Paul and 6 psc was there, and uh, N2 Wild Bill and many others, Harani and so on. We were able to sit there and work with these kids and teach them ham radio, teach them good operating techniques, show them how to play with the ICOM radios, experience what they were, because we knew at the end that there was going to end up being a gift left behind for them to operate. The kids were able to rotate through using the radios and learning to broadcast along with handheld radios. So after about a week of training, we were also able to apply to the Fiji government and get a license for them. So um, upon departing from the island, we left a complete radio station, antennas, uh, some extra cash to do some things. They had all the assets to get on the air. So it was very uh, rewarding for us, and I'm sure that the kids had a great time with that. These are a bunch of shots from the classroom on how we carried out the activity. One, you can see it involved classroom activities where we actually taught theory about radio communications. You can see the students really engaged. We were able to take each of the team members and have them actually walk to different locations with the kids and operate the radios. And I see my proud friend, uh, Paul N6 PSC, and a couple of shots up there. And the neat thing about working with youth and working with radio communication is to be able to have people who have the patience and the whereabouts to set and actually take the time and have uh, uh, the right uh, thought process to work with them and engage them. And I tell you, we really had a great team. And one of the... public television and participate along with their local government. It was a fantastic little project. So you just never know where it's going to go to. We also had a chance to go to Ethiopia. couple days and visit our, our club. I said, sure, I'll do that. Well, it didn't take too long to really get engaged and be pretty impressed with these kids and what they had to offer. So 
part of that activity was, as the kids explained to me, we can't get a ham radio license because our government has no means of doing testing. So the big activity here was, well, geez, let's go talk to your government. So we actually made a day tour, went and spoke to the head of telecom, and I said, what are the rules of engagement, or how does someone go about getting a ham radio license in Ethiopia? And the comment came back and says, well, if you have a residency permit where you have proof of residence within our country, the other thing is you have to have a foreign radio license because we don't have a testing methodology here in our country. So I said, ah, so if some, I asked the question, so if a young student here had a foreign radio license and they had a, a residence permit, would you issue a license? And the response was overwhelmingly yes. So that engaged a new project. I was able to get a few friends. Uh, I ended up getting Al, K3VN, Paul, N6PSE, myself. And uh, we packed up and decided to head back to Ethiopia in December where the kids had already been studying. During this trip, it was so fantastic in the fact that we were able to do, I guess, test 62 students. 57 of them passed some level of ham radio license. Total 161 examinations were given over a two-day period of time. The better thing of that is there was a lot of great interaction and interest with the kids and assembling antennas, testing antennas, getting on the air, learning, a lot of mentoring, real solid mentoring going on. So here are a few of the photos. And part of that activity, I was able to meet this, this uh, incredible person, Sid, Echo Tango 3 SID. And um, probably many of the uh, ham radio people on the internet have worked uh, Sid over the years. He is now uh, has left us about a year and a half ago, uh, but his legacy continues on with the kids at the school. He was very generous in the things that he did for them. So the kids passing their ham radio license end up being a fantastic uh, activity. We went back to the government now that they had their U.S. ham radio call signs. And the government said, well, the rule's a little bit different. Yeah, they have a residency. Yes, they have a ham radio license. But we really only issue a license for radios, not people. And since they only really have one radio at the school, we're going to let them use, continue using the Echo, 3, Echo Tango 3 Alpha Alpha as their call sign. So we're still working on the idea. I have a good friend, uh, uh, Ken, who's uh, still over there doing some activities. And Dex has done a nice job. Of, of continuing this effort with them, and I'm sure I'll make another journey over there sometime soon to see what else we can do. But very proud of our, our activities and working with the youth at the Ethiopian Amateur Radio Club. Uh, this is a photo uh, from South Sudan. We had a, uh, the honor of being part of a team to go down and work with uh, the establishment of the new government in South uh, Sudan. My friend N6PSC Paul was very instrumental working with a few Europeans to uh, get this license and, uh, and coordinate the effort. And I uh, happened to be one of the, the nice team members who were able to leverage and experience this activity. And part of the day when we talk about youth, anytime that you're operating, you want to get youth involved. In this case, you can see uh, this is a fantastic photo that was given to me operating with youth in the background. But uh, through Paul's efforts and some of the other gentlemen, they were able to get the local uh, students involved to come to the school and participate and observe radioactivity. And it was quite a, quite a wonderful experience as well. So let's get to uh, the Dorothy Grant Elementary. I'll give you an update. To summarize, we've had about 100 and over 100 kids involved in the way that the program has really worked. We've had, we have a teacher, a primary teacher there who has a classroom. First started out to be second grade, third grade, now she's a fourth grade teacher. So within her class, she has between 23 and 25 students. So the good thing is we're able to invest the radios within that classroom and also engage those students. But we also set up an afternoon program twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays for two hours, where we have another 25 kids. So roughly for the last three years, going on four years, we have about 52 students each year uh, that have been involved with ham radio. And I would say we've had about 115 students actually transmit on the radio. A very exciting activity uh, about a year ago, we had Joe Rudy 
uh, NK7U, who is a famous baseball player, took the time with us. And on 20 meters, we were able to get every child from that school in the Ham Radio Club sit there and talk for Joe for about five minutes. That was, I can't thank him more for that opportunity. And then we had a real famous guy from ICOM call us on the radio and talk to the kids. And, and that ended up being Ray Novak. So it was really nice to have that. Our, all the radio equipment at the Dorothy Grant or ICOM radios. We have two ICOM 70, uh, 70, 746 Pros and an ICOM uh, 7100 that are at the station. And some of the latest and greatest news from the station, literally today, uh, the concrete is being poured for the new tower. And what is amazing about this, though we started off as one or two people involved, the ham radio community in Southern California, along with some good friends of mine, we're up to probably about 25 people that have been engaged donating, whether it be a radio, a coax, or their time, or money, or putting up a beam, and it's just been fantastic. And I, so if you've never done a youth project and it's not your cup of tea to get in front, but you have the opportunity to donate an old beam, a piece of coax, some time, or mentor somebody, you got to do it because. All those assets really come into play, and they're very, they're very important for uh, some of the growth of our youth today. Here's some shots you can see early on that we started this project. Everyone says, Dave, how did, how did you get this going? It's so difficult to get a program going on in an elementary school. Well, it first started off when we were going to DX0, which was the Spratly Island D expedition. Uh, and in my hometown, Fontana, California, this is where we stored the container and the materials. And during this transition, this is how we end up meeting Bev Matheson from the school because she said, oh, what are you guys doing? I said, well, we're loading up this container. We're going to ship stuff to, to Palawan Island and hopefully out to Spratly. Well, from that, she says, well, geez, that sounds really interesting. My kids would love to know about it. And I said, why don't we do a, some type of flag project? Why don't, you, why don't you give us a flag with some type of theme? We'll take this flag and we'll actually uh, carry it along the way, have different people sign the flag, people endorse it, we'll take photos, and the kids can learn about this whole trip that we're on. That trip ended up turning into a nice garden project. The kids said, hey, we have this garden area. We'd like to revamp, put a water fountain in, and, and uh, make it a nice reading area. So the kids put together a a project for that. I was uh, lucky enough to be in a position to help fund uh, all the different portions of that project along with some parents who were uh, put a little bit of sweat and labor in with the kids as well and it it really has taken off well. I'm really proud of the kids with that. So here we are. We start with a flag project. We do a garden project and then I set them up perfectly. Then they say well what is it that you do to be able to travel like this? And uh, and I said, first of all, I'm from Fontana, California. This is where I grew up, right here. This is where I'm from. And I got involved with ham radio through my mentor at Fontana High School. So I said, would you guys be interested in listening to ham radio? And they said, absolutely. So these bottom photos here in the next slide really is uh, here's some photos of actually what the garden, uh, after a little bit of removing weeds, looked like before we fixed it up. And down at the bottom, this is the first day of bringing the radio in the class. So we hadn't worked out the dynamics about letting the kids hold the mic yet. So I brought a radio in. There's the ICOM radio in action. Put the, put the radio into play, pass it around, let the kids talk. And then I just realized, wow, these kids are really engaged, very interested. They, even though I had 27 kids in the room at the time, there was no hanky-panky going on. Everybody was very attentive. There's no talking or chatter. I said, wow, I think I have a captive audience. So you can take second, third, fourth grade students, give, some, give them something that is interesting. Maybe it's vintage. Maybe it's a little bit new than working with a computer. And they really take a sincere interest in that. So this project turned into something like this. My mentor in life has been WA6DBK, Lewis P. Mallory, the guy I give him all credit for really reshaping my life. He's the guy who set up the Fontana High School's WB6HJJ school station. And what we were able to do with this, I said, Lou, you did a fantastic job, but 
after you retired, the program essentially stopped. I said, how about if we start with the elementary school? We set up the ham radio station, started with one radio there. And on this particular photo here, you can see Lou actually visited the school. I shared uh, with a little bit of tears the, with the kids. And I said, uh, this is why it's important to me. And they said, bring Lou Mallory to the school. And I said, really? Bring him to the school. So we brought Lou Mallory to the school. And on this particular day, you can see Lou Mallory up front holding the banner that the kids gave to him, endorsing him. So Lou is 84 years old now. Uh, he operates probably 40 meters most, but this really meant a lot to him. So he was able to get engaged with this project, and it really, really went well. So part of the exercise, what do kids need? They need support. They need to have assets. They need radios. They need antennas. They need electronics. So part of this activity, we set them up with a complete electronic laboratory, oscilloscopes, generators, components. We, we develop some training materials so they can learn about electronics, but also ham radio stuff, antennas, beams, radios. And in this day and age, it would be hard to think that you would have an elementary school with third, second, third, and fourth graders with three ham radios in the classroom, all GICOM equipment, a tower, two verticals, and the policy set by the superintendent of the school that says that station will get put into play, that tower will get put into play because it had a major interest, a major impact on these kids. Parents are fighting to make sure that their kids get it put into this one teacher's class or they're enrolled in the ham radio club after school because it such, has such a, a great impact. We were able to get 25, uh, 24 kids now to pass their ham radio license as technicians, fourth and fifth graders, which is huge. There are a few people that really have helped me in this. Paul N6PSC, Arnie N6HC. We have Bob uh, N6OX, who's now helping with the install the rotor and the beam. We've had uh, W6KK, Charlie, who's been involved. Uh, W8TN, Clark out of West Virginia, who's been involved. And then many, many more. The guys at John Hopkins are now have grabbed a hold of this thing and they're engaged. I'm located out of Maryland, though Fontana, California is my hometown. It's difficult for me to get there through business. So I knew it was important to, the, the process was not about me, it's about the kids and how do we bring more people and get them involved and share, uh, not the ego, but share the experience. Let them have an opportunity to teach something. And to see roughly 25, 26 people involved with this, I just sat back and it just, it's a blessing. Anyway, so if you can see here, one of the activities that uh, about uh, two years ago, I said, listen, I'm going to have you guys take the exam. They go, we're, right, we're not ready for the exam. I said, I don't, it's not really about passing or failing. I want you to have exposure to this exam. I want you to have a goal, a target. So we brought all the kids in and working with Ray, we were able to put together an ICOM gift bag for them. We printed certificates and we made the whole day as into a field day. With this field day, we were able to get 52 kids involved. We had them rotating between operating, fabricating antennas, learning electronic theory. Where would you ever find that kids in an elementary school are sticking things in an electrical outlet in a room measuring voltage? These are the type of things that are going on. And let me tell you, we really had them engaged. So everybody took the test. It was a great experience. Everybody got a nice gift bag, a certificate. So that was the first shot over here you see all the way to the left of the kids who were involved. The next year we came back, this really set the hook good, as we call it in fishing. We ended up having another group. Some of the, some of the kids obviously moved on to sixth grade. And we had another influx of some uh, new third graders that came into the class. But this last uh, test period, we end up having 24 kids pass. Four kids of really last year, and uh, I guess it was four, five kids last year, 19 kids this year. So 24, I'm really thinking that probably this next year coming up, we try to have two different test sessions that maybe we'll get another 20 more. Our big test is this. Though we're really in, uh, we're really connected with the school for this uh, with Dorothy Grant Elementary. Now we're seeing this being our third or fourth year going in. We're losing fifth graders who are engaged, they're all excited. They're moving on to a middle school that doesn't have any of this type of activity going on. 
So I know I'm carrying a little bit of a burden that I need to move to the next step, implement something at that school, and work with the, uh, the junior high school teacher. And the, the most difficult thing is trying to find a teacher who has a sincere interest of wanting to do it, right? I, I think that uh, our ham radio community has proven that if you have something good going on, it has a good buzz associated with it, and there's success, people will engage and open their wallet and participate. So now I have this daunting task uh, to get it going at the middle school and get the same type of supporters. So it's a very exciting uh, area. So at this time, I guess uh, we're a little bit early. About how many? It's about 10 minutes. One of the things that uh, working with my friend Paul and 6 PSE over the last, uh, uh, I guess it's been about five or six years, really set up this Intrepid DX uh, group. In this group, we always, uh, hi Eric, come on up here with you uh, this way if you would, and here's, here comes Paul, is that we enjoy going on exotic the expeditions. The more risky, the more rare, the more it excites us. And we love to activate through the expeditions and doing some type of contest of events from these remote islands. And part of this, besides ourselves, there are individuals who go out and put themselves really at risk going on exotic locations. So it's not about the, the total Q uh, amount. It's the amount of risk. It's about the sincere in, uh, in, uh, investment that a person might do. So I guess at this time, I'd like to have Paul come up, N6PSE, who's the president. Uh, we're, oh, okay. So we're going to wait till Ro, Ray, Ray Novak gets in here. But, but Paul, how about if you come up for a real quick? I want you to talk about Intrepid DX also, and then before we do this award. Come on up. Here you go. So why don't you tell the audience about Intrepid DX and uh, what our mission uh, is. And, Good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you, David. We, uh, we formed the Intrepid DX group in uh, 2010 uh, following our uh, D expedition to uh, Herbal Iraq as YI9 PSE. We were just a loose knit ragtag group of guys. We didn't have a name or anything. And people called us those Intrepid DXers because we kind of went to a scary place. And that seems to sort of become our specialty is we like scary places and we respect guys that like uh, Eric Hall here at K9GY, who also activates scary places. And uh, although we don't want to encourage people to go to scary places, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's gone to the most scary place. He's, he's just recently come back from operating uh, for a year in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Helmand uh, Province. Province, yeah. Uh, so since we uh, formed the Intrepid DX Group in 2010, We've uh, activated or participated in de expeditions to South Sudan, which was a, a new country, uh, as Dave mentioned, uh, Ethiopia. We participated in de expeditions uh, in Yemen and also uh, uh, Rotuma Island in Conway Reef. And we're working on something really big right now. It's, it's not too scary, but it's not a nice place either. And we hope to be able to announce something real soon. So we're trying to pull all that together. Uh, is right here? Okay, so we, we created the Intrepid Spirit Award last year when we became aware of the, uh, the incredible uh, effort and humanitarian work that the Italian DX group was doing in uh, Somalia. They made three D expeditions to Somalia. They also activated Togo and some other uh, places in Africa. And we really wanted to show our respect for them. And so last year we honored uh, Silvano Borsa, I2YSB, with the Intrepid Spirit Award. And we've decided to make an annu annual event. And again, as we don't want to encourage people to go to scary places to get our award. But in the case of Eric, for example, he's a U.S. Uh, Army Reserve officer. Uh, enlisted. Enlisted. And uh, uh, he volunteered for an assignment in uh, Afghanistan, yep. which, as we know, is a scary place. And we didn't encourage you to go, but, no, no. but he went with the Intrepid Spirit. And he was extremely active from Helmand Province. 41,300 contacts in a year. Uh, two years. Two years. Just incredible. And at the end of his activity there, he announced that 
he really wanted to work anybody else that needed a contact with Afghanistan. And every day he was he was on the band, sunrise, sunset, in the gray line. Boy, he was just hammer time. And we have so much respect for the fact that, that somebody like Eric would go there, serve our country, that he would uh, be part of making something good happen in Afghanistan, and also his his perseverance and spirit to be on the radio and to give out contacts. We're, we're extremely grateful for what Eric's done. And, and so for that reason, uh, we want to give him the Intrepid Spirit Award this year. Um, back. Okay. You get it in the back. You get it without fingerprints. So this is the Intrepid Spirit Award. And again, we have so much respect for for what you did, and uh, you can hang this in your shack and and uh, know that your efforts were appreciated. Yes. Oh, move the mic. Oh, okay. A little bit higher? <laughs> up right, up down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you very, Thank you. very much. We're Thank very you. proud of what you've done and, and how you've done it. Your spirit you. is just incredible. Thank you. Good Thank you. Yeah. Also. So also part of this uh, wonderful activity, uh, ICOM approached us to, at the process of doing this type of award early on and said, listen, this is a worthwhile activity and we would like to throw in an ICOM 7100 to whoever you might select to win this award. So uh, it just so happened that you're our guy and uh, we really respect the activity. I'd like to have uh, Ray go ahead and present this award. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very Thank much. you. As as you're getting sorted here, I want to thank you very much. I think the first time that I got to physically meet you was at W9DXCC last year when you did your presentation. When they told me that you were getting the award here, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's got to be in our booth. I want to give them a radio. I really appreciate everything you do. You laid out there, and not only for ham radio but for the country, and I greatly appreciate it, sir. All right. Well, thank you very much for allowing this opportunity to present the award to Eric and also to talk about the youth and amateur radio. And so hopefully uh, in the near future, we'll, have, we'll talk about a middle school and how we get them fired up. Ray, thank you for all everything you've done for me over the years in our group. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.